Monitoring the well-being of the elderly and providing support with IoT is the second project we did at Umdina Japan. Why did we choose this topic? Japan is famous, among other things, with the long life expectancy of Japanese people. This is Kane Tanaka, who, at the time of her death in April 2022, was the oldest living person in the world at the age of 119 years. Average life expectancy in Japan is now 84 years of age. Throughout the world, life expectancy is rising and the share of elderly people, those over 65 years of age, in the population is also increasing. These people normally don't work and in the context of rural population, many people are living on their own. Due to various reasons, most of the elderly people want to stay in their homes as they age, even if their physical condition declines. However, as they do that, only a small part of them have daily contacts with their families and a considerable part of them reported having no one to consult or rely on. Moreover, because of low smartphone ownership, not all of them have options for communication or access to apps for support. As part of Undino Japan local chapter, we wanted to address some of the problems elderly people face while living alone. One such problem are medical emergencies such as falls or strokes. Such incidents can escalate to life-threatening scenarios if one does not raise the alarm quickly. Thankfully, with IoT and mobile technology, we can rely on data collected continuously. There are quite a few sources which we could uh, use for monitoring the daily life and the health of individuals. Uh, however, because of the limited use of technology by the elderly, we root out uh, using special sensors or wearables. On the other hand, smart meters are being rolled out in many countries with the primary objective of energy saving. So we ask ourselves, can we use uh, this real-time consumption data uh, provided by smart meters in a non-intrusive way to detect medical emergencies? So, we decided to explore smart electricity meter data as part of this project. Our goal was to use smart meter data to detect emergency scenarios that pose health risk to elderly persons and notify the relatives or health services personnel to take timely action. We chose to work with Low Carbon London dataset from UK and Household Electricity dataset from France. We found during literature review the results of a study conducted in Japan to understand the rhythm of daily living of elderly persons. It was found that the usual daily rhythm of elderly people is steady, with four rhythm categories – getting up and breakfast 5 a.m. to 10 a.m., indoor or outdoor activities 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., dinner or going to bed 5 p.m. to 11 p.m., and sleeping 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. We do see a pattern in our dataset that is quite similar to the results from the study. Most of the daily activities are performed with the help of various appliances, so it is natural that more activities result in more electricity consumption. However, there will be more electricity consumed during evenings and nights for lighting purposes, hence the highest consumption is found during dinner time. The medical emergencies of interest are the scenarios where the elderly person is incapacitated and unable to ask for help, for example a fall, a heart attack or a stroke. All such incidents affect the daily routine of elderly people, with electricity consumption decreasing substantially or becoming a flat line. When this happens, we can alert relatives or emergency services and the next step can be a precautionary call to the elderly person or his or her neighbor. Most heating and cooling appliances have a low duty cycle, which can be loosely called as a percentage of on time. So the appliances operate with an on-off cycle. As a result, consumption oscillates between low values, usually close to zero, and high values, which have a wide range. This gives rise to a right skewed distribution, as shown here. It is crucial to detect lower bound anomalies in, consum in consumption measurement, which is an indication of a person being inactive, so log transformation of consumption measurement will help in meeting this goal. The datasets we chose did not contain any labels to identify emergency scenarios, so we had to work in an unsupervised setting. We chose three different methods to compare, 
namely empirical CDF-based outlier detection, a classical probabilistic method, then local outlier factor, a density-based method, and isolation forest, an ensemble method. Since the data is time-indexed, we also utilized time-series decomposition to detect anomalies in routine consumption pattern. Time-series data can be decomposed into various components, such as trend, which indicates long-term movement, seasonal pattern, which represent pattern that occur in fixed interval, cyclical fluctuations, which represent pattern that do not have fixed interval, and residuals, which correspond to aspects not explained by other three components. Once the time series data is decomposed, we can apply threshold to the residuals and identify anomalies. We utilized Profit Library for time series analysis. The idea is to learn the usual routine by training on historical data and compare the future consumption streams with predictions made by the train model. When the actual consumption is outside the confidence interval of the model, we treat it as an anomaly and thereby a potential emergency scenario. Let us open the project dashboard created as part of this challenge and compare the results from these four methods. The URL for the project dashboard is Omdena Japan AI for Elderly Wellbeing dot streamlit dot app. You can see the project homepage here and the different pages created as part of this project. Let us jump straight into the page that allows us to compare the different methods this page operates on the London Low Carbon Dataset, shortly called as LCL, and it compares the anomaly the detection methods, namely the time series analysis using Profit Library, and the three unsupervised methods, namely ECOD, Isolation Forest, and Local Outlier Factor, shortly called as LOF. We have the option to select one of the 333 households that have elderly persons who are living alone. So let us choose one of the households and click on this button here. When we click on this button, what happens is the dashboard simulates a future electricity consumption stream as it appears on the dashboard of a health service personnel or on a mobile app used by the relatives of the elderly person. As you can see here, the electricity consumption is arriving as and when the stream comes in, the data is analyzed as per the historical data available for these households and anomalies or anomalous consumption patterns are detected and flagged. Whenever a red dot appears, those are indicators of an alert or a notification being triggered for the family members to act upon or the health service personnel to act upon. This dashboard is set up to simulate 24 days uh, data in the future. So you can see here the same data is being used by the four different methods to detect anomalies. And you can see here each method has differences in the way they operate. You can also see down below the anomalies that were detected based on the historical data that is available for the selected household. And this was done using the time series analysis method. As you scroll down, you could also see the time series components that have been fitted for this particular household. As well as you can see here, the time series model that was fitted on the historical data. Now that the simulation of 24 days uh, electricity consumption is complete, we can compare the results from the four different methods. As you can see here, the time series analysis method has detected anomalies in this region, whereas 
the e card method has detected in different regions over here here and different points over here and the same can be said of isolation forest However, the local outlier factor has detected additional set of anomalies on the upper bound as well, in addition to the lower bound anomalies. Since we operate in an unsupervised setting, there is no single quantitative measure that can be used to compare the performance of these four methods. So we had to rely on observations from various households and the ease of interpretability of the results to identify a method that is best suited to detect anomalies. You could also zoom into the historical data to understand how the time series method works. You can see here that the black dots are the actual historical consumption data. The blue lines are the predictions by the time series model and the light blue band indicates the confidence interval. These black dots that are falling outside the confidence interval can be treated as anomalous consumption patterns. So the time series analysis method gives an intuitive way to interpret the results. In addition, it is possible to control the type of anomalies that we wish to detect, whether we want to only focus on lower bound anomalies and do we want to include upper bound anomalies or not. One of the limitations of working in an unsupervised setting is anomalous data are mixed with normal data. So the machine learning models learn to treat past anomalies as typical behavior. This can be overcome at the time of implementation by having a calibration phase to collaboratively track the activities of residents and capture their baseline pattern accurately. In addition, a mechanism can be added to verify all reported anomalies and capture the feedback for fine tuning future predictions. Though we were able to identify emergency scenarios from the electricity consumption data sets, there can be quite a few false positives reported as sleeping in or going out can also lead to electricity consumption pattern that is similar to those of emergency scenarios. And there can be false negatives as well in cases where the resident has turned on appliances before the emergency incident. These limitations can be overcome by using smart home sensors or specialized sensors. Stay tuned for updates from Omdena Japan local chapter as we will be exploring solutions based on sensor datasets in the next challenge. Thank you for tuning in and do check out the project dashboard using the link provided here.